so we are back it's the jim and aaron show <laughs> annotated dark hey documentation yeah so last time we did hello world and we talked at least like 20 minutes just about hello world right um we since did it was the first one there's a lot to say so we'll see how how this one does um we're at dart.dev slash samples. I'm going to open this try dart in another tab. We can go over there and use that in a second. Okay. So I'll read this and then we'll talk about it. We'll break it down. So variables, even in type safe dart code, most variables don't need explicit types. Thanks to type inference. All right. That's a lot to unpack there. Initial thoughts, Jim. I'm looking at the code and it seems that unlike other languages like C Sharp or Java, for example, where you have to explicitly declare the type of whatever variable you're trying to declare, you just use a var keyword. Mm -hmm. Similar to similar to JavaScript, where yeah, you can it, also use it a looks var like keyword. Old school JavaScript before let and const, right? Exactly. Like for you example, would be name for is looking a string. At this. Yeah. Here is an integer antenna diameter is a float mm -hmm. and you have an array and you have an object. And it's nice that Dart can infer whatever type you're, it is just from the var keyword. Okay, so when you say infer, that's this type inference. Yes. Okay. Dart is a strongly typed language. Var essentially is syntactic sugar, but underneath behind the scenes, Underneath the hood, var infers whatever type you're wanting to declare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it says most variables don't need explicit types. I guess this this includes most of those variables. Uh, I assume maybe there's some that do need an explicit type. And I'm curious um, what those explicit types are. Yeah, it might be an advanced thing. Um, but what is what is type safety like? Why? Why even mention that? Like, don't all variables have a type? So, like, what is what is what is it? How could how could something be type unsafe? Well, in dynamic languages, where in JavaScript, for example, whenever you declare a variable of type integer and you try to uh, assign a string to it, it allows you to do so. But for here, for Dart mm -hmm. code, if we declare variable name it's a string. And then later on, we try to assign an integer or flow an object to it. T uh, type safety means Dart will automatically prevent you to do so where with a message akin to the types don't match up, please resolve this. Mm -hmm. So it's like if I'm bowling and I put those little like gutter guards in there so I can't <laughs> bowl a gutter, that's kind of like, uh, it's keeping me safe in, in that sense is, is, is kind of the analogy I think of. Sure. And another analogy would be if I make a mold of a cup, for example, I can't then put uh, uh, an, uh, a cup that's of a different type in there. For example, what if I want to put a massive bowl in this mold of a tiny cup? Can't do it. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's, um, let's play around with it and see. Let's copy this first one and jump over to the dark pad. So from our last one, uh, our last little video, we said that every function or every dark program needs a, a main function and that's here. So the entry point, uh, entry point. Yes. Um, so if I wanted to, instead of printing hello world and I just pasted in that name variable, I could say print name. Do we think this is going to work? Um, well, I'm under the assumption that dark code, similar to other code is that it executes sequentially from top to bottom. So mm -hmm. I don't know if declaring it after the main will cause issues, but let's see. Yeah, let's find out. It didn't give us any warnings pop up. So, ha, ah, there it is. So the way I think about this, like whenever I hit run, it took a while. 
right? So I think the program has to compile, correct? And like make a little execu executable file of sorts. Um, it doesn't just run on the fly. Um, so the way I think of that is like, it compiles it, so it has to know about it. You know what I mean? Unless there was some mm. rule that when it was, when Dart was designed, they were like, well, it needs to be in sequential order. I think as long as it's in the same file or even in the same like program or whatever that gets compiled down into one unit of work, if you will, um, that it's, it's going to know about this name thing. Right. Let's put the name variable declaration above me. Obviously, it'll work, but let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we there go. You go. Cool. Um, Convention dictates variable declaration at the yeah. top of the page. Yeah, and I guess it's, you know, code isn't just for the machine, it's for the human as well. Um, so we need to know um, what's going on. Although, you know, sometimes in, a, in a, like a Flutter program, I typically see the main entry point at the top of the file, and then I see everything else at the bottom. Um, you know, the classes, the stateful widgets and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's that's the one thing. This, this always takes precedent at being at the top and anything that's called in here, even if it's at the bottom, it's just like, you don't want to nest your entry point, which is kind of like the main focus of the program to be at the bottom. Uh, so that's something to think about. Um, okay, so if this is, um, this is type safe, if I wanted to um, put in here an integer instead, that would be like if I changed it, right? So type safety means I can do this. Um, I can change the name to Jim. No. Uh, it used to be a semicolon. Ah, semicolon. Awesome. Look at that. Something that, uh, that you got to get used to coming uh -oh. from. Something else. Variables must be declared using the keywords const, final, var, or a type name. Name is already defined. Okay, so it looks like we can't declare a variable and set it at the same time and then change it subsequently. Am I reading this correctly? So uh, if Let's I just see. do this again, I still get the error that it's like already defined. So how would I reassign the variable, right? Maybe it needs to be one of these const or final things. It's funny, huh? What if you don't initialize the name variable so, just, and then so, you so. assign it underneath? Okay. So, um, so we remove the assignment. So now we're just saying, hey, there's a bucket out there called name. It's a variable, it's gonna hold something and then we're doing the assignment afterwards. Okay. Prefer typing uninitialized variables and fields. Okay, so this isn't an error, it's this info thing. Um, in this case, we could say string. And I think that's, that's typing it. <laughs> so that info thing uh, message disappeared. Um, so we're saying like name needs to hold a string value, but we're still getting an error. Ah, the non-null variable name must be initialized. Okay. It appears that when you in, uh, declare a variable, you have to initialize it to something. Interesting. Even though it, it suggested, <laughs> I don't know. Error compiling JavaScript. Let's hide that. Now, so what do we got? I believe the logic is this: you, we declare a variable name that's a mm -hmm. string, and we initialize it with a string. But then immediately we assign it another string without doing anything with the original string. And I believe the compiler says, "What's the point? Mm. What if Aaron?" We reassign name, but within main. 
and then we print out name. Like so. Okay. Look at that. The name is now there Jim. We go. In honor of Jim and his wisdom. That makes sense. <laughs> nice. Okay, that was cool. Uh, let me change this back to a bar. Run this. So now, now we're back to type inference. We haven't explicitly typed it. Um, it has inferred that it's a string. If instead of Jim, we wanted to say the name is 42, an integer. Um, I don't think that will compile because it's type safe, meaning it, it's not go. going to allow it. Okay, a value mm -hmm. type a different can type. be assigned. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Um, I mean, we could always change this to an int. Now remember, string was a capital S. Here we have int is a lowercase int. And I have this little underline because <laughs> now we can assign a string to this. So there's a little mismatch. Um, let's see if we just initialize it as, as such without doing an assignment. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, should be initialized because it's of type in and it doesn't allow no. Hmm. You would think when it comes to these types, there would be a default variable. Excuse me, default value. Okay, so I think what you can do is you can you can do this optional notation um, with a question mark. So that's one way to get around it. Otherwise, you you have to do the assignment at the beginning or let it do type inference maybe. But didn't earlier it said like something like, hey, don't don't set these things initially. But I guess now we're not really getting, you know what? Actually, I have one issue here. Prefer typing uninitialized variables and fields. Let's look at this. So this was just a preference. Did we see this last time? I don't think so. Okay. You may accidentally assign them to a type that you didn't originally intend to. So the bad example is don't do this, you know, where we're creating a static variable, but not assigning it, creating a static variable, not assigning. Uh, here we're creating a static var or a variable and not assigning anything to it. Now we're doing the assignment. This is all bad. Um, also bad inside the function. Let's take a look at the good. Yeah. We've got a static variable with an assignment. Okay. Another assignment. It says, it says, okay. So we're initializing the baz variable as an integer without an assignment. It's in a class though. Um, isn't this exactly what I just did? So it gave me an okay. It gave me an info message. It didn't give me like a warning, like an error. Bad class. I'm guessing the compiler prefers that if you're going to declare a variable, mm -hmm. but without initializing it, at least provide the explicit type. Okay, let's make some class here and put name inside of that without the, um, it still, it still gives me the, the preference. So it's it's not an error, it's just a, an info thing that says, hey, this is gonna work, but you may, let's see if that. It goes away there. because the no, class. Now, now it's an error. error. Oh. And that's specifically the integer thing. So maybe these docs are out of date because this says okay, but it clearly before, says, yeah, it gives us an error. Try adding an initializer expression or a generative. So it's, it's a little bit of a different error message because it's in a class um, or market is late. That's an advanced thing for variables. We'll cover that when we do advanced variables. Um, okay, I feel like we're, we're getting a little into the, the weeds, too many weeds. Um, 
let's go back to what it was. Bar name it was Voyager one semicolon. Not reassigning, just printing like so. Okay, so we have type safety where this has to be a string. Um, we have type inference unless we set an explicit type of string. Okay, and yeah, that's that. Let's look at the other variables we had. I'm just going to paste all these in and comment them out when I don't need them. Okay. And how I'm going to do that is just do command slash. There we go. Highlight command slash. Okay. So name is no longer defined because it's commented out. So here we've got the year is 1977. This is an integer because there's no decimal. It's inferring the type as an integer. Um, to change that and make it explicit. INT lowercase. Okay. And again, we can't do like a, a reassignment of like a string or something. So Jim can't be a year. Jim is a name. Um, but if we want to it change the year to that wonderful year of 2020, just kidding. It works, but let's not do that. We don't want to go back there. Okay. All right. What's the next one? Oh, yeah. So let's comment that out and then do this. So, yeah, so we've got a number antenna diameter. And I do command enter or command return to run. So that's printing this thing. I think this is a double or a float. I forget. I think there's a method here we can call superclass. No. I'm familiar it? with the double type and the decimal type in C sharp. Not sure what the decimal value slash float value type name for it in Dart is. Yeah, I was trying to see just like what class it is. Parent class. No, nothing called parent. I thought there was one called super class, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Let's 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 see. Is it a double? Survey says it's a double. Okay. <laughs> ah. That's good. So it's not a float or something. Undefined class float. Yeah, there is no float, at least capitalized. What about lowercase floats? We have lowercase floats? Nope. The only floats we can have decimal. here are root, root beer floats. Decimal. Yeah, I don't think. I think we're good on the double. Cool. So something with a, a decimal like this is a double. Fantastic. This is where it gets fun now. Fly objects, flyby objects. Okay, what class is this? Using the bracket syntax, I'm more familiar with it as an array, though in mm -hmm. Dart, it could be possibly a list. Okay. In Python, bracket syntax means a list. For example, so here's an array, undefined class array. So that's not a thing about capitalized. Undefined class array. Okay. So some programming languages call it an array. Looks like Dart calls it a list. But it's a list of what? It's a list of strings. Can we have a list of mixed types instead of Neptune? How about the number one? Lo and behold, you can. Ah, you can declare a list and initialize it with mixed types. Types. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to variable type declaration, explicit type declaration, I'm curious why certain declarations are uppercase and some are lowercase. Um, I'm thinking all the. Yeah. I'm assuming the the primitive types, such as integer, 
double and so on are lowercase, but for the more complex types such as collections and of course string, you have to use uppercase. I think it's just history of like where they took the data types from is what this answer is suggesting. There we go. <clears throat> they are used to lowercase type names for primitive types. There you go. So is string not a primitive type? No, it's not. Hmm. What's, what's more primitive than a string, a character? The definition of primitive and non-primitive types is that coming from C sharp is that primitive types the data is stored on the stack, whereas non-primitive types, the data is stored in the heap. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how Dart does things under the hood, so there's probably a related question. But yeah, I think that's good. Um, okay, so there is one way we can be a little more specific if we're, so we're not doing type inference anymore. We're being very explicit. And that's to say, we just want a list of strings. So like here we had a string name. Here we can say we want a list of strings and this also works. So Neptune is back. Um, so now if we change this to a one or a float 1.11, I don't think it'll work. The element type double can't be assigned to the list type string. So because we've locked it down and made it even more specific, um, it, it suddenly rejects this, this value. Ah, um, it's nice. You can have a, a general list that'll accept anything, or you can be very explicit with the ankle brackets. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, in, in, in the hierarchy of like class inheritance of these types, um, string and float, or double, sorry, <laughs> string and double, they all ultimately inherit from a thing called object. So you can have um, a list of objects that um, have different types. So in, in my mind, this list object is the more precise way of just saying list. So this this to me is syntactic sugar, um, whereas um, you can do that as well if you have a mixed list. Makes um, sense. Another thing to look at you might see when you're in DartPad is whenever you're initializing these brackets, you see how it has this little helper pop up. Um, sometimes you'll see like void or dynamic. Uh, dynamic is something else you can also do. And the difference in dynamic and object is something we can Google. <laughs> Dart dynamic versus object. I was reading about this last week. That's why it's purple. Because um, they, they look kind of the same, right? Like what's the difference? And the way I understand it, um, according to this answer, is that if you specify that type is dynamic, it basically turns type checking off. And it's you're kind of like going into um, like no man's land, as they, as they call it. Um, whereas object is just a way to specify the super, the most super class. Does that make sense? Wow. That means you will not get warnings by calling any method on a dynamic type variable. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so a dot link when it's dynamic, you don't get any warnings, um, but this is better. So use dynamic probably sparingly, if at all. Um, and if you need multiple different types, just use object, which it, it inherits from. Cool. Okay. So that was, I'm going to make that like that before I comment it out. Cool. Um, is there anything else we could do with that? I mean, we showed that you can do different types. So I think we're good there. 
correct. They Finally, always come to objects. Mm, you call them objects. I call it a hash from, from Ruby. Um, so what, what is an object? To clarify, to clarify, is this an object in Dart? It's, it's, it's a data type. It is, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a string. It's not an integer. It's not a list. Um, it is, it is some I'm data always defined familiar in a particular with the, way between these curly brackets, yeah. Yeah, I'm familiar with the syntax where if you use curly braces, it is an object coming mm -hmm. from Java, coming from C Sharp. Which is different in, in Ruby because in Ruby, everything is an object in the sense it's object oriented. So like an array is an object, a variable of like, you know, uh, your name variable would be an object, a class is an object. But this particular type of object, we call it a hash in Ruby. Um, other things call it a dictionary, um, a hash map, something like that. And it's basically like, in my mind, there's, there's just this notation. You have the, the curly brackets and then the type of, like the, the sort of pattern that it follows. And that is um, key value pairs. You have a key on one side, it could be a string, I guess. It could be an integer, it could be any data type on the left, maybe even a special type. Like in Ruby, we have symbols, um, which instead of using a string with a colon, you just do something like that, where it just like the Ruby interpreter picks up that that's your tags key. Um, it's a symbol type. Um, this looks more like JSON looking, right? And JSON objects are also key value pairs, correct? Correct. Um, the, um, yeah, so, so, so yeah, that, that's basically what this is, this object hash map kind of thing. It's, um, What's that's it the name. What's Dart? I'm in familiar Dart. with it as dictionary. <laughs> okay, let's try. Not a class. Also not a class. What about hash? Okay, so you see what about how we're uppercase I'm, map. Try that. I was gonna see something real quick. <laughs> Check this out. Okay. <laughs> so the way I instead of like going to documentation or something, I just gave it a type that I know exists, but is probably not the right type. And then I let the compiler give me an error message to tell me the exact type. <laughs> <laughs> so like, uh, just utilize my laziness. So map. Ah, it's called object. a map in Dart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are correct. Capital, capital M map. Okay, so now it should work fine. Um, and similar to how we did our list with a specific type of object or string, if it was all strings, um, there are two things in here, keys and values. And again, we use this little bracket notation. So the left side is a string and the right side, well, in one case we have a list and in the other case we have a string also. Uh, and what do they both inherit from? Object, of course. Bingo. And we saw that earlier in the error message. I could have just copied it, but um, that's that. Um, do we allow trailing commas? Yes, we do. And that I really like. Because whenever you make a change and you see it in version control, I don't want this line to be changed if I'm just adding something. Um, let's do uh, an integer key. So we're going to call this pi. Okay, and we can't do it because we've said, oh, we're expecting string keys, but we can now use object to cover all scenarios. Unless when it, it comes work. to maps and dictionaries, the key has to be unique. But what if we have, for example, 3.14 as the key 
And then we have single quotes, 3.14. Let's see what happens. So, so what there we're we doing go. here is, yeah, we're printing, printing it out under the hood. This 3.14 is different than this 3.14, but when we're because printing- Because they are it, of different types. Yeah. But for when we're printing it, it's just making it visual for the human eye. Um, so it looks the same, but it's, it's really not. Um, let's see if we add 3.14 again, see what kind of warning we get. Let's call it redundant by. Two keys in a map literal shouldn't be equal. Oh, it doesn't give us an error. It just gives us info. Um, change or remove the duplicate key. So my understanding is if, if we wanted to access this thing and we said, and typically I think how we do that is this bracket notation in other programming languages. I'm assuming it's the same for, so this is gonna return not pi, I think, because it's the string. Yeah, so that returned not pi. But if I just gave it the number, can we even do that? Because that might think that this is a list with some kind of weird index. Okay, that's redundant pi. I'm kind of curious now if we- What if you put- Yeah, go ahead. What if you put redundant pi above pi? I don't know that there's going to be a guarantee. In this case, it might go top down. Um, yeah, but it, it picked the bottom one for sure this time. I don't know if it does that every time. Whatever algorithm they have that, that looks up that value. Ah, uh, maybe if keys are the same, it picks the, the last one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. Interesting. Um, but for best practices, obviously, it's not good to have yeah. the same keys within a map. We don't want too much pi, just enough pi. Okay, cool. Awesome. So that, that was good. Um, yeah, so we have the types. Um, we got... How we print it out, um, there was the way we showed how to access it. Um, there's probably some methods in here you could even use. Um, like we could get all the values if we wanted to. It's probably gonna do an array or a list of, yeah. That's interesting how it does that. It puts it in parentheses instead of brackets. Um, you could also get a list of keys. And where it was, yeah. Tags, URL, 3.14, cool. Mm -hmm. Look at that IntelliSense. Yeah, it's beautiful. Your string update. Yeah, so we could, we could do some stuff here if we wanted to. Okay, so let's say remove object key returns an object. Okay, so if I use this remove thing, it's gonna take an argument of type object, which is, and it's expecting a key, so I can put it in any of these three things on the left that I have. And remove this, so let's remove 3.14. Now it's printing the removal of it, which is kind of weird, like what does that return? Maybe it returns the, the key value pair that was removed. I don't know, it's still thinking. Did I break it? We may have broken it. Aaron, what does remove return? What did the intelligence say? It returns um, the value. Ah, yeah. there we go. It, well, it, it returns an object is what it says, but it doesn't say which object. Hmm. You'd have to look that up in the documentation, I think. You what might have better you put, yeah. What if you put back 3.14 colon redundant pi and then you call remove on 3.14? Which one will it remove? You see which one it does? Okay. Hmm. 
probably extra pie this time. They removed the extra pie, the one at the end. Interesting. Yeah. So if we actually just remove it here and then print image, I'm expecting that it's just gonna have like these three because extra pie is gonna be removed. Oops, and I need a semicolon. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It removed both of them. Oh, it removed <laughs> all the values for those keys, mm -hmm. but it prints out the final value mm -hmm. of all the keys it removed. Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm just printing image now. So I, I removed the um, key value pairs at key 3.14. So it wiped out those two. And then I printed what was left over, which was just tags and URL. Pretty nice. I like it. Yeah, it's 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 cool. I I enjoy using the um, the explicit types. Um, it's 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 it, well. If you use the, the var keyword and, and you just give it, um, let it do type inference, at least if you do some bad coding and, and, and use those variables in a way they're not allowed to, to, be, uh, to do so, you're not gonna have a program that somehow crashes later when somebody goes down that code path. It's just gonna tell you up front. So that's nice. So, so it's, it's good for the machine to have that, um, that type safety. It's good for the human to have explicit readability. Types. Yeah, for readability, because now I know what's what uh, and what this image variable expects. Um, so, so I, I do like that. Um, so it's nice to have a good program. Nice, you know, it's done tightly um, in the sense that like it's it's done right. Um, but then also I can I can just read it and know what's up. It's a little like extra mental computation to have to like acknowledge this type thing um but i think once you get used to it that that cognitive load will, will go down um, it leaves and, less ambiguity mm -hmm. whenever sure. i use java or c sharp especially in c sharp i take full advantage of the var keyword unless the variable assignment is, can be ambiguous. If it is ambiguous, I always explicitly write it out, mm. the type. Nice. Cool, so that is, that's variables. Um, I don't know that there was anything else to say. We covered the type safety, which means you can't reassign stuff basically, right? Um, and it, your program won't compile. It'll give you nice helpful error messages. Uh, maybe you have to read it a little bit more. There might be some little nuance to understand, uh, but you can pick that up once you spend more time with the program. Um, we use the object whenever we had mixed types in collections, whether that was a list or a map. Um, and we saw that we had type inference when we use the bar keyword. Uh, so Dart kind of knows what it is when it does the assignment. Cool. Um, I see this final a lot in Flutter code, but we'll get to that in a, a future, more advanced discussion of variables. Cool, so that's variables. Thanks, Jim. Next we'll do uh, control flow statements and um, we'll break it down. But that's All next right. time. Cool. See you guys Thanks, next Jim. time. Adios.